everyone, I'm Miyoshi Mata, Director of Global Programs at Miracle Foundation. And today I'm going to talk to you about how COVID-19 impacted our work and the lives of the children and families we work with. My goal is to leave you with some practical examples and information on tools and processes we've leveraged during this time to not only provide relief support to children and families, but to really help them recover, stabilize, and become even more resilient. So for those of you who haven't heard of Miracle Foundation, a quick overview. We've been working in India for over 20 years and we've impacted the lives of over 15,000 children across 300 childcare institutions. Our work in the past was grounded in providing a good quality of life to children living in institutions, but has since evolved to ensure children living in institutions grow up in a family and have an opportunity to do so. Our second core initiative focuses on prevention. So how can we prevent children from entering the system in the first place? With COVID, um, on March 24th, 2020, India went into lockdown. Uh, thousands, if not millions of families were out of a job, um, didn't have food to eat, and couldn't take care of themselves or their families. At the same time, the Honorable Supreme Court of India issued an order asking childcare institutions to look at the children that are staying in their institutions and move them into their families wherever possible. How this impacted us was 298 children out from the, our partner childcare institutions got sent home to families. These were rapid placements um, without proper assessments, proper preparation. Um, so we knew we had to do something. Specifically, we decided to focus on two things. One was provide relief packages to make sure these families were safe and fed. Um, the second was to expedite our case management process. So with the relief packages, we provided over 21,000 people with um, these relief packets that included things like rice, lentils, pulses, spices, and even cleaning products like soap and sanitizers. Um, with our expedited case management process, we, uh, now that kids were in the families, what we really wanted to look at is to see if the children could stay with their families permanently. Um, and so our case management process that we designed focus, focuses on five things. The first thing we look at is why did the children come into the institution in the first place? This gives us a general idea of the type of support we might need to provide when it comes to permanency. Some of the things we've identified so far are education, livelihood support, and economic stability. The second thing we do is we look at risk. We wanna make sure and identify any potential risk factors. So we deploy our um, risk assessment tool. The third thing we do, um, and it happens throughout the process, is monitor and follow up with every single child, every single family. So every 10 to 15 days, our social workers on the ground are speaking with the children and families to make sure they're okay. And to do so, they leverage our Home Thrive Scale, which um, allows us to conduct a holistic um, assessment on the families across five well-being domains. So we're looking at access to education, health and mental health services, their livelihood and income, um, and also relationships, the family um, relationship with each other, but also their community and extended family. So we assess um, the children and families on this tool. We also um, uh, engage existing services. So we're reaching out to the child welfare committee officials and the district child protection officials, government officials and the local community to help when it comes to providing um, and linking the families with existing government programs and schemes for housing, um, pension schemes, rations. And we are also um, reaching out to NGOs in the community to um, help strengthen some of these families as we look at uh, focusing um, on stabilization and helping them recover from COVID-19. Um, the other thing when it comes to direct support services that we focused on are education and mental health. So we're providing tablets to all of the children that are in family so that they have access to remote education materials, as well as continuing counseling services um, by partnering up with mental health resource people in India itself. We've leveraged technology throughout this process, so our risk assessment and our Home Thrive Scale are available for anybody to use online or offline, and uh, we'd be more than happy to share it with everybody as well. 
And if I were to conclude and leave um, all of us with kind of the top key learnings and takeaways that we have had in this process, you know, one would be, I hope a commitment we make going forward um, and a learning that we take forward is to continue to center the voices of the families and children. It is so important to make them a part of every single decision, especially when it comes to placement um, and involve them in these decisions. So that's one big key takeaway. The second is to look into existing resources. There's no point starting from scratch. And this has really been a game changer for, for us, the support that we've received from the local government officials and being able to identify um, these existing government welfare schemes that already exist um, and just helping the families navigate the system instead of creating a new one um, has been really important and something I encourage all of us to continue to look into moving forward. And the third would be to collaborate. You know, we hope you know that you're not in this alone. Um, feel free to reach out to us or thousands of other organizations that are experiencing so many similar things. And we'd be more than happy to share best practices, lessons learned, and also we look forward to learning from you. So with that, um, we look forward to continuing this conversation and we hope to hear from you soon. Thank you so much.